<laughs> What's up, everybody? How we all doing? What's going on? Yo, yo, yo. Ooh, it's my bad, bro, with the seven months. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. That's wild. Thank you for being here. Had a little bit before I got in here. Dab, thank you for the raid. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're feeling better. How you feeling? What's going on, everybody? Yeah, don't you don't have to create a special repository for the Code Wars. Uh, whatever repository you're using, that's fine. Uh, just go ahead and uh, put, give me that link. So whatever one you've been using is totally cool. <laughs> so yeah, I had a technical interview today and they asked me about separation of concerns. Nailed it. Let's go. I love it. Had an interview, went well. Yo, VA, that's awesome. I got some work from a client. Just spoke start tomorrow. Let's go, Imran. Look at look at us. What's going on? All these interviews, people getting clients, people feeling better. What's going on? Love it. Add it location to the to do app. I love that Rockefeller. That's a good addition. So Kcoffs, uh, we'll, we'll we'll get into it. So the um, the if if you added 100 devs as part of your experience on LinkedIn before, when you tried to add like 100 devs as the company, nothing came up. Well, now there's a company, <laughs> and when you sign up, there's the logo, so it looks pretty again. Ariel Speedwagon probably needs not to be a private repo. Yeah, I got to be able to see it. You can add me to the repo if you want. Like, if you don't feel comfortable with it being public, I think adding me to it could be fine. But just make it public. That'll be way easier. Yeah. Unless you have, like, some super secret code in there. Nobody cares about your code wars. Uh, since I only found you on Sunday and I haven't watched all your past videos yet, do you really think it's good to push even level eight katas to Code Wars daily? I think once you get through the JavaScript portions, start with level eights. Fundamentals track though. Don't do anything else other than the fundamentals track. But yeah, getting them in early. Remember our rule is no more than 20 minutes. If you haven't got the solution in 20 minutes, it's time to stop, look at the solution, figure out how they did it. So even if you're brand new, never touched code before, you can still do that same process and get something out of it once you know the basics of JavaScript. And uh, yeah, we have the lovely uh, Code Wars post by Blah here. Speaking of blog posts, uh, I created the blog team channel on Discord. And uh, so that's all set up now. The roles, once we get to Remo tonight, I'll give everyone the role. And so you should be able to get into that channel uh, tonight. Also caught up on the Ask Leon channel and caught up on some of the uh, mod mails too. So uh, some of you should got more info. Uh, no check-in tonight. So Roya, Roya, instead of doing check-in, I want you to add uh, the 100 devs to your LinkedIn and make sure that you add the new 100 devs company so that the image shows up. Yeah. So 10, I don't know. I think it's gonna be, it has to be an exhibition match, right? So if it's an exhibit, if it's an exhibition match, then like they're gonna do, they're gonna do wonky stuff. But if it's like a legit, like, it winds up being like a legit fight. I mean, no contest. Floyd's going to mop it up. But I think they're going to do something weird because of, of it being an exhibition, probably. We're going on remote. Yeah, we're going to finish up. I wanted to give folks a little bit more time for the team projects now that we've done the review. And so... And so the idea here would be that uh, we had our review on Sunday. We had some review on Tuesday. We're going to squeak in just a little bit more review this evening on stream and then jump on over to uh, to Remo to finish up your team projects. If you already finished your team project, great. Make it better. Make it look better. Make it function better. Uh, make it make it do something better than it is currently doing. If you didn't start a team project, start it. <laughs> Joy the team, uh, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna do that a little bit later. 
so yeah, no check-in tonight. Add, add 100 devs to your LinkedIn. Put that you're full-time, you're a software engineer at 100 devs. Uh, we're gonna be setting that company up and that, that site will go up, uh, hopefully like, I'm, I'm aiming for like the end of this week, like today or tomorrow, hopefully. So it'll go up so people can see that it's like an agency. Uh, and then blog team will start putting up kind of technical posts onto that site. And so we're gonna make it look as though it's an agency. And so people that click through will see that you're a software engineer at the agency uh, and that'll help. Yeah. Cool. So we did, so we did some review on Tuesday and Sunday. What if we're already employed? That's up to you. Uh, it's up to you if you want to add the experience or not. I'm not going to say that it's a requirement, but for folks that wanted to add the experience, now they can have the actual company there. And if you're not in the LinkedIn group, you should join our LinkedIn group as well. Uh, exclamation point LinkedIn will give you the access to our LinkedIn group. You just, uh, you sign up and I kind of just approve people in batches. Yeah, I know there's no way in hell that Bill Gates saw that tweet, but I felt kind of bad. Like, I don't want to talk about Bill Gates' personal life and all that stuff, but it'd be really shitty if like they were going through it and then Bill Gates like, look at this, look at this fucker. <sighs> Rip. Yeah, it's not like a joke. I just I actually like generally felt bad about it. Like I wanted that tweet to be be a joke, but that was bad timing, eh? I find it impossible to feel bad for a billionaire. I don't know. I think I think that hurts all of us. Alrighty, folks. Let's give everybody a chance to get in here. We're gonna start reviewing. Uh, if you need the code, it's on our Discord exclamation point Discord. Uh, Leon, the, all the back-end crash course will be combined into one video. Yes, I'm going to combine it all into one video. Uh, I have the location for the 100 dev set as LA, like Los Angeles, but you can put remote or whatever you want to put on there. Yeah. Cool. Had a great coffee chat. That might turn into some freelance work. Let's go, Pi. Yeah, I, I um, looked at the, I looked at the, I counted the, um, the, the paid client work again today because a couple other people like added stuff. And so we're officially at $64,001. $64,001. Do you recommend our 100 hours project have user auth? Absolutely, it's a, it's a must. It must have authentication. Add 1K to that, got a signed contract on Friday. That's awesome. All right, so we're at $65,001. <laughs> That's wild. $65,001. That's it. So the cool thing is between uh, 100 devs and my most recent, like within the past year, uh, Folks at 100 devs and RC have brought in over a hundred thousand dollars in new client work, which is which blows my mind during a pandemic, and it blows my mind. So, everyone that put in the the hustle to get a client, to to freelance, to uh, work with a grassroots organization, to contribute to open source, kudos to you. Way to crush it! And if you haven't yet, get it done. Get in there. Oh, I didn't know that, Yash. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Uh, let's get into it. I want to spend some time reviewing the binary upload boom. We're going to take a look at the method override. I'm going to answer any of the questions that you have, and then we're going to get off stream and on the Remo. I want you to work in your teams. 
Uh, if you don't have a team, that's okay. I, I want you to maybe join one that's already established and see what, what, what you can do to help. And uh, like I said, this working in teams is really important. It's, it's probably one of the things that most folks struggle the most with, honestly. And so we got our first team project out the way. Uh, we're gonna have a class or two on like how to work in teams, how to bring like agile methodology to our teams. And so it made sense that we like struggled first and now we'll learn like how to do it appropriately. So no, that's gonna be some of our classes coming up further. That's all right, 42, add to it, make it better. Uh, is it worth making a static website for a client with React? Does having no backend attached make it overkill pointless? If you are using like a static site generator, then using React is totally fine. Um, but to do like a basic client site, with like all those tools, unless you're really comfortable with them. I don't think it's necessary. Do what you feel comfortable with. Yeah. All right, folks, let me go ahead and bring up demo pro real quick. And I'm going to connect my iPad here. Just one second. Beautiful. <laughs> Jamstack, baby. Hey. Uh, my blog is using Gatsby. I love it. And uh, it's just so neat. Like, you just push, I just push a repo to GitHub, and it just automatically redeploys for me on, on Netlify. Oh, I love it. I love it. Alrighty. Let's go ahead, little Leon here. Let's go ahead and chill the music here. Alrighty, so Sunday we saw building all the way up to the back end. Tuesday we saw a little bit more at the back end because on Sunday we did the wrap names. On Tuesday we did the to do list, and then tonight I want to spend just a little bit of time. Uh, I want to spend a little bit of time with looking back at binary upload boom, mainly looking at the method override and how that's working. And then we're going to get off stream. We're going to get right to get the remo and get to working. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. If you need a chance to open up the code, it's on our Discord. Go ahead and grab it. Uh, and that's it. Did you see the launch of the Pro North American Rugby League? Do you think it'll get a foothold? Uh, I want it to. Now, will it? I don't know. I played in the, the National League, like the League League uh, for New Haven, the New Haven Warriors for a while. It was fun, but I hope it can take off. All righty, folks. Give everybody a chance to grab the stuff they need to grab it. And let's talk through this. First, let's, let's take a look at this site. I'm going to log out real quick. And I'm gonna, this is our binary upload boom. So I'm gonna log into an account that we all know and love, bob at bob.com. I'm gonna put in my password here. Not now. And um, here we go. So here's our the site we've seen before. <laughs> uh, there's the... the, the there's now the site that we've seen before. Uh, you can add a post. You can see individual posts. You can go back to your profile and you can return to the feed. And here's the feed because you all are wild. I love it. This is pretty funny. This is my favorite. <laughs> Look at this one. <laughs> it's an iguana dog. <laughs> Vulgar display of power. <laughs> this is pretty good. Uh, so you can see we have a feed. Uh, we can click on we can click on any individual post. So we have not only the the feed. Uh, but the 
the individual post for that feed. Can you see this? Yes. <laughs> uh, so we have individual posts. Uh, there are likes on this post. And um, if, if it had been my post, which is a little weird that it's not, uh, there would have been a trash can. But since this is not my post, I can't delete it. Uh, so let's go back to my profile. If we click on one of the posts that's mine, all right, you can see that I have this lovely uh, delete because it's my post. Right now, if we look at the heart, it's the same thing. I can do the number of likes, right? And uh, we can do likes and we can do deleting here. So I want to show you what's a little bit different about this one because chat before tonight or before we did binary upload boom. How did we increase the number of likes? Like what happened? Like I clicked this heart and what happened chat? I clicked the heart and what happened? Ah, client side JavaScript and then it made a put request, exactly. I'm a fancy boy tonight. Look at that. Got the berries in the water. Ooh. Ooh. Now nah, it's just water. The uh, I saw somebody ask about the LinkedIn group. Yeah, there's a LinkedIn group called 100 Devs, and then there's a company called 100 Devs. Cool. So yeah, before. We ha I gotta put my pinky up when I drink it. I forgot the pinky. I got you next time. I'll get the pinky up. Uh, so last time, if we look at our old code, in our old code, uh, we had some client side JavaScript. And let's pull up that client side JavaScript here. One second. We had some client side JavaScript that was like listening, right? We had all these event listeners. And these event listeners were then going to make requests. So uh, we click on like the thumbs up, it'd go up to the LI, it grab the, like it would go from the, 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 the actual element up to the LI, then grab the ID of that specific post. And then we make a fetch to our server and that fetch would be a put. And then we'd have to listen to that fetch uh, in terms of that put request that was made to our server. So we needed all this client side JavaScript to do it. Now, with method override, we no longer need to have this client side JavaScript like at all, which is pretty cool. Yes, thank you for the, uh, the hydration. Cheers to you. Got the pinky. Sorry, this is for you, Cross. There you go. Huh, huh. Gotta get it in screen. Mm. There we go. I got you. Fancy boy tonight. All right. Cool. So I clicked on some button. It triggered an event listener, and then I made a fetch. Well, the cool thing is that with this current code. I don't need it. I don't need it. Let's go ahead and right click inspect. And when we get to this inspect, we have something neat here. Let's look at this. Let's look at this form here. Hold on. Look at this form. Form action. Bobby Lynn. Hey, thank you for the gifted sub. I appreciate that. Thank you for being here. Look at this action. Post. <laughs> I love the person that got the get the sub too. Tina got the gifted sub. I appreciate it. Thank you, Bobby Lynn. Cool. Look at the look at this action. It's post, like post, and then chat. What is this? What are these numbers here? Chat. What are these numbers that I'm seeing here in this action? Yeah, it's the ID of that like specific post. And then we have something unique here on the end. 
We have something a little, a little, a little weird here. Look at this last piece. Question mark underscore method equals put. Whenever I see a question mark inside of some sort of URL, what is that? Chat, what do we call those? We see the question mark, there's an alarm bell that goes off. Yeah, there you go. It's a query parameter. And so this URL has a query parameter. And the really cool thing is that I have set up my server so that it looks at all the requests. And if it sees this query parameter, underscore method, uh, it's gonna override. So let's take a look. Uh, chat, before we go and take a look at the code, this form submits and originally, what type of request was this form submitting making? It's a non-question. What type of request was this form as it submits making? Yes, it's making a post, exactly but we have some code that's gonna override that post and make it a put. Cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at our code. So I'm gonna start my server.js. And for me to do any of this, I need this method override package, right? I need this method override. This is what's gonna enable me to do the fancy stuff that I'm doing. Now down here, I set up my method override. And basically what it's doing, it's saying, hey, whenever you make a request, if you ever see this query parameter, override the method. So if you ever see this underscore method, right? If you ever see this underscore method, then whatever it used to be, we're gonna override it based on what, you ever, what we told it to do. Forms can only post and delete, correct? Yes. Forms by default can only do post and get. With method override, we can make our forms also do puts and deletes. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So uh, that's all I need to set this up. I need this line right here and I need to um, require that method. Now, when I click this form, what I'm really doing when I click on this button when I click on this like button, what am I really doing, chat? When I click on this button, what am I really doing? One 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 step before that. One one step before that. Yeah, there you go, Imran. When I click that button, I'm submitting the form. Right? Look, it, it's a button with type submit. Type submit. So when I submit this form, what type of request am I now making that we have method override? So I click that like button, I'm making what type of request because I have the method override? What type of request am I making, chat? It's now a put, yeah. It would have been a post, but method override made it a put. See, the form thought it was gonna go get. Right, the form is like, you know what? I got this, Leon, I'm gonna go get. But then it got got, right? Cause we go get, our forms get got. Okay, so this form got got. It thought it was gonna post like a jabroni, but then it got got and now it's a put. So method override, this is really important. Method override makes it so that your forms get got. That's all you gotta remember. Forms, method override, got, got. It thought it was gonna be a post, but it got, got, and now it's a put. Like a jabroni, right? It's messing around, I found out. All right, cool. So the neat thing is, when I click on this button, I'm really submitting the form. And when I submit the form, I'm really making a put. And I'm making a put to this whole route. Chat, what does this route start off with? What what is the what is the first part of this route? Like I'm making a put, but what is the what is the what is the first part of this route? Yeah. It's post, then 
like post, and then the ID, and it's a put. Cool, so let's go ahead and look at our code. We start with the server.js. Is it is line 57 or line 58 gonna run, chat? Line 57, or everybody put 57 or 58 in chat. Cool, yeah. It was a post route, so line 58 is gonna run. Cool. Let's go to our post routes file. So here's our post routes. Now, what line is gonna run in this post routes chat? Yeah. All right, we know that we're in post route, so we don't need like post here because we're already we already if we already we already know that we're there. So now it's like post, great. It's a put that matches, and uh, it's an ID. Cool. So this route will fire, and the numbers that were here, the six zero eight C six A E seven. Those will be passed through the ID. So we're gonna to go to our post controller and we're gonna look at the like post method. So let's go to our post controller. Controller. It's really hard to not sing that song. All right, post controller. And we're looking for like posts. Post controller, like post. Ah, here's like post. Alrighty. What are we doing here, chat? What are we doing here? We're in this like post method. What are we doing here? What is, what is it? What is this code telling us to do? What are we doing here, chat? Yep, 42, you got it, yep. We gotta find it. And when we find it, we're gonna update it. Cool. So we're gonna go to our, we're gonna go to our database, chat. How is this code interacting with our database? You're all telling me it's gonna go and like update stuff, but how is this code interacting with our database? <laughs> Mongoose Magic. <laughs> that's, the, that's the name of my band if I ever heard it. Yeah, Mongoose, but specifically through our, our model, right? Mongoose and our and our post model is going to enable us to talk to the database. Great. So instead of doing like the DB dot collection, we're going to use Mongoose and we're going to use our model to talk to the database. All right. Once we once we've established that we're using the model to talk to the database, we're going to go. We're going to find one document and update it. So we're going to find a document where the ID matches. What do you mean? What, what is this? What, what is this piece right here? The ID matches what? Where the ID matches what? Ah, the ID from that URL. Yeah, if we go back and look, we can see that this string of numbers here, which is like the ID of the actual document, we're gonna grab that as part of the rec.param. Remember, rec.param ID. Because if we look here, this ID enables us to grab that value. If we called this zebra, right, then inside of our post controller, we would also need to call this zebra. That's enabling us to grab that ID out of the, uh, the request that came from the form. Cool. All right, so we're gonna go to our database we're gonna find one document where the ID of that document matches the ID from that form. And then once we find that document, what are we gonna do? Yep, we're gonna increase what we find, specifically the likes property by one, All right? so. We clicked this heart button 
and we can see that the the actual value, the actual action was post, like post, and then had the ID of the post here in the action. We had the method override what made it a put. Cool. So when I actually click this button, right now it's 11 likes. When I click this heart, right, what happened is I actually submitted this form. I submitted this form and I made a put to this post like post route. So let's follow one more time from the server JS. We know it's a post route. So we're going to go to our post routes. It was the like post route. It was a put and we grabbed the ID from that request. All right. Now we're going to go to our post controller. We're going to run the like post method, post controller, like post method. We're going to go to our post collection, find one document where the ID matches. This is how we're going to find the matching ID. And when we find the matching document, we're going to find its likes property and update it by one or increment it by one. So let's actually take a look at what will be happening in the database here. So we'd wind up going to our post collection we find this post like this 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 object id matches 608 c6ae7 let's take a look 608 c6ae7 that was a match so we found this matching document all right we found this matching document and we incremented the likes property by one so it went from 11 to 12. Where does rec.params come from? It's a good question. So whenever you are sending a request, you get some properties that you can use. Rec.params is looking at whenever you add a parameter to the URL. So that ID, like that rec.params, that ID comes from whatever you put after this colon here. There's also rec.query which would look for a query parameter on your URL. So rec.params and rec.query are ways of looking at the URLs where the request is coming from to get information from the URL. Because remember, a lot of the information that we send throughout the web is encoded in these URLs. How did the post ID get in the form in the first place? Well, when we rendered that post, Right. When we rendered that post, when we rendered the post, we put the ID in there. Look, post like post. And then our EJS is taking that value and plugging it in. And we have the method override there, too. Yep, it was put in there by the EJS. Yep. Medium Fry, hey, thank you for the gifted sub. D Rocks with the gifted sub. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for being here. But on your get post, you're not sending the ID. Uh yeah, I am. So let's 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 refresh this page real quick. Let's refresh the page and see what happens. So let's walk through like loading this page. All right, so I'm gonna click refresh. Chat, what type of request did I make? I just refreshed at the page. Yeah, I made a get. All right, so I made a get request. Uh, let's go ahead and, so once again, the URL is post and then the, the ID of my post. So I just made a get request, cool. Uh, if I'm at the server JS chat, what line is going to run 57 or 58? <laughs> what? Hey, Reggie, thank you for the five gifted subs. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's wild. 
Thank you, for everyone. Thank you for all the gifted subs tonight. I appreciate that. Is that another one too? What? Reggie, thank you for the other gifted sub as well. That's wild. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. What? That's weird. I think they're coming up one at a time. That's cool. Well, hey, I appreciate that. Thanks so much. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Did you do something interesting to make that happen? Like, or did you just did you do it like the normal way, or did you do it because it came up as five on my activity feed? But it, uh, but I've never seen it do it one at a time before. That's really cool. He did a put request. <laughs> this is this is this is the problem with teaching everyone to code. They're gonna start hacking the system. That's cool. And then it comes up with the other one too. Huh. Never seen that before. Method override. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, can we get like a, a micro Leon spam, please? Or a moat spam, please? Uh, for all of the uh, gifted subs tonight. I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. I'm going to put my moats in here, too. You got got. got. <laughs> you got got. I'm going to put uh, some bobs in here tonight. I appreciate that. Thank you. Alrighty, so we refreshed the page and we said that this was a git request. So we all said that, well, since it was on the post route, all right, anonymous cheer, thank you for the 100 bits. I appreciate that. Thank you. So since we're on the post route, we're gonna go to the post routes file. Great. Uh, chat, what, what line runs when we refresh the page, we went to the post routes. What line's gonna run here? What line runs this time? Ooh. Ooh. It's gonna be line eight. And the reason we know it's gonna be line eight is because it's a get. None of, none of these other ones are gets, right? Whenever we reload the page, it's a get. Pinky, please. God, I keep forgetting the pinky. Hold on. There we go. Hold on. There we go. Refreshing. We refresh the page. So that's a get request. So we know that it's on the main route. And we know that the ID is in the URL. So we know that this route is good. Uh, we know that it's a get because we refresh the page. We know it's the main route. It's just slash post. And we know that it's the ID is going to be captured by this, this parameter here. Uh, we're going to make sure that we're logged in, right? That's what the insure auth is there for. We want to make sure that we are logged in. And since we're logged in, we're going to go to the post controller and we're going to run the get post method. So let's go look at our post controller controller. All right. And here's the, here's the get post method. So, Chat, what are we doing here on line 23? I'm gonna get DMCA'd with these uh, these pitch perfect bars here. What are we doing here? We're in the get post method. That worked, right? What are we doing? Mm-hmm. We're doing some mongoose magic. We're gonna use our post model to talk to our Mongo database. We're gonna find one document and that document has to match the ID that came in our URL. So we go back to the route, has to match what was in the URL. Let's look at the URL, has to match, has to match this, uh, this ID here, great. So we're gonna to go to our database and we're gonna find something, find one post where it matches that ID. Right, so if we were to go to our Mongo database, we would look through until we found one that matched, and ah, here you go. This is the matching ID. Right, that's the matching ID. Bobby Lynn, hey, thank you for the 500 bits. I appreciate you, thank you. That's cool, I never saw that emote before. That's fire. 
It's like moving too. Appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to find that ID. Cool. So now we found the post by the ID and that post, like that document from our database is now being stored in this post variable. Chat, what am I doing here on line 24? Unicore, is that what it's called? Uni 100, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna serve it up. We're gonna pass all that information to the EJS. We're gonna pass in the post that we just got back from the database, and we're gonna pass in the logged in user's information. So let's go ahead and take a look at our post EJS. Mm -hmm. All right, if we look at our post EJS, uh, we are plugging in the title that came from the post. Like if we look at this post, it has a title, it has an image, it has some a bunch of stuff here. So we're gonna use all of this stuff to plug it into the EJS. So post that title goes in here. Uh, the actual image URL goes in here so we can see the image. Uh, we have the action where the ID of the post gets plugged in. We have the number of likes that gets plugged in. And if the logged in user matches the user that made the post, well, then they get the, uh, the delete form as well. Yeah, we are P we're, 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 we're doing a review of some code that we've written in the past where we're using method override to do some cool stuff. And right now we're looking at uh, how we're, we're passing our MongoDB data into our EJS file. Can you explain line 13 to 23? Like you mean on this page or a different page? Like where we were before? This page, the EJS, cool, yeah. Uh, so this right here is the form that we have for the like button. So we're just building out that action that we saw that enabled us to do the likes and plugging in the ID there. That's all. And then down here, we're putting in the number of likes. And then this last piece here is we're looking we're saying, hey, well, whenever we created a post, we stored the user that made the post, right? And so what we can do is we can say, all right, the person that made this post, are they the logged in user? Because if we look at our controller, we passed the logged in user in as well. So what we can do is we can look at our, look at our stuff here and say, all right, did the user that made this post, right? Because this is the, the idea of the user that made the post. Did the person that made the post are they the one that's logged in, right? Are they the one that's logged in, right? I love that this has become a meme now. Can I like time people out? How do I time people out? Timeouts, timeout flopsy. Oh no, it did 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Flopsy. <laughs> I thought it would I thought it would give me an option. <laughs> I thought it would give me like like a like a ten second or something like that. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, does it show timeouts? Oh, it doesn't even show it. Did that un did undo it? <laughs> no, it just did it again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Flop C seventeen. How do I even get back to my chat? On timeout. Flop C. 17. Okay, cool. We brought we brought them back. 
Uh, whoops. <laughs> I'm glad you're back, Flopsy. <laughs> Alrighty. Cool. So, we, we are checking to see if the ID, right, the ID of the logged in user, sorry, here, matches the user that made the post. Because if it is, we want to give them the ability to have, like, the delete button. And that's all we did there. No worries, 42. Leon, what stops the user from liking multiple times? Nothing right now. Right now, there's nothing stopping our users from eating this button until their finger falls off. Uh, we can come back here. And the cool thing, like the method override before, before, before we use method override, what would what was the problem with somebody like clicking that button really fast? What was the problem with somebody like clicking that button really fast? What were we what were we waiting for the old way we did it? Yeah, the old way was like queuing up a fetch and that fetch had to go to the database, it had to resolve, and then we had to get the response back and then we had to like refresh the page. And so the old way that we were doing it, it wouldn't like, it wouldn't work, right? Like it would, it, it would freak out. But now we're just submitting put after put after put after put after put. We're not, um, we're not waiting for a response, honestly. So let's. Do you ever see people that are like really good at like clicking? I know that's a weird thing to say, but like there are people that are really good at clicking. They can like spasm their muscles so they click faster. So like I just yeeted that to eighty four really quickly. Um, I wonder what my reaction time on this mouse is. Has to be lower. Hold on. Ugh, that's horrible. Ugh, this mouse. No, I can't do it. Can't do it on this mouse. <laughs> Hold on. So this is also, the screen's also, so the other, the other thing here too, the other thing here too is that my screen is like being captured. Hold on, hold on here now. Hold on. Hold on. Bluetooth mouse. Bluetooth mouse. My screen is not real time. My screen, my screen is going through my PC. It's going, it's being captured by a capture card and then coming out the other side. And so like, I'm just saying, Bruh. just saying, just saying. Oh, you, you got, got. Oh, that made me click. <laughs> Why is it making me wait so long? No! I'm not even showing it to y'all because I'm just ashamed of myself. All right, here it is. Here's the here's the bet. Uh, we're gonna do a prediction here. Start a prediction. Under 210, uh, over, let's do 220. All right. Here's the prediction. The reaction time test. I'm going to do it until I get a valid test. 
And is it going to be over 220 or under 220? That's what we're doing. Over 220, under 220. If we get 220, we run it again. If I click before the test happens, I do it again. So under 220, over 220. You got, you got 30 seconds to get in here. Y'all don't, y'all don't trust me. Oh, I got this guy. Be good. Hold on. Oh wow, actually, it's pretty even. My remember, it's Bluetooth mouse. Screen's being captured. chat Twenty nine is garbage. It's not pretty fast. Get out of here. I'm a sub one 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 hundred millisecond clicker here. Well, sorry, sub two hundred millisecond clicker here. All right, we're gonna run it back. We're gonna run it back. Uh, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room this time, though. Gonna give myself a little room this time. Under 230, over 230. Under 230, over 230. Under 230, over 230. I do like one hundred milliseconds flat. Here we go. Got got 30 seconds to get in here. <laughs> what are we doing tonight? What are we doing? <laughs> what have we become? This is all stream becomes. This is a, screw learning. go remember we keep going until we get it oh what Hold on. What was it? That was a 205, right? That was 205. It was 205. I, I like double click, but it was 205. <laughs> Y'all didn't believe in me. <laughs> Y'all didn't believe it could be done. Got got is what happened. Y'all got got. If you didn't believe me, you got got. All right, let's, let's close this out. <laughs> I 
<laughs> we need to bring up the instant replay here. <laughs> Who who who's people are up big points right now. People are up big points on this one. Got thirty K. <laughs> who who made the most points here? Who made put it who made the most points here? Twenty two K up, eighty one K up. I'm tilted. <laughs> I clipped it. <laughs> Yeah, wait, wait until we get, wait until we get the, uh, the, the, the Logitech, what is this one called, Pro Wireless up going? Oh, it's over, it's over, it's over, sub 150, guaranteed, uh, guaranteed. <laughs> Alright, let's get back to code, I think that's what... <laughs> 260 plus people just watch just gambling on my click speed. I love it. I love the internet. How weird is the internet? How weird is the internet folks? Hold on For the 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 the, the replay Here we go Boom, that was 205 for sure. For sure. Just just for the non-believers. Just for the non-believers, 205. All right, <laughs> looks photoshopped. All right, let's get back to the code real quick. <laughs> I'm just gonna start we doing slots. That. That's like just like all the other twitchers are doing these days. Yes, I called them twitchers. God damn old. All right. Questions about this code. I I think I can get under two. I think I can get under two with this one, with the MX Ergo on Bluetooth. I can get I can get under two. <laughs> so back to the code. Uh, so we have this lovely method override that enables us to use forms, and so that means if we look at like my public folder, my JS folder is empty. I don't have any client side JavaScript now. Who has the most channel points? Who who thinks they have the most channel points? If you have the most channel points, put your number in chat, please. I'm curious. Eighty-four K. Hundred and twelve. Nice. I can see it. Like I can go in and see it. <laughs> One twenty-two. Oh man, some of you are a couple of yolos away. Okay, all right, getting there. Alrighty, y'all think I'm joking, but I really want an excuse to start an OnlyFans. I think I can get some of that OnlyFans money. <laughs> Lost two hundred k though. I really think I could. I think I think I could do big on OnlyFans. Just saying. I just want the hot tub. Let's be honest. Exactly. <laughs> this teaching is too stressful. But if I could just have a hot tub and just be my sexy self, let's go. Alrighty. Questions while we're here. Questions about. Uh, the method override. There's one other thing I want to talk about before we go over to Remo, and that is Cloudinary. But we're at the top of the hour, uh, so we're going to cool off. We're going to let the tilt disappear, and uh, we're going to take our break. So 
Let's go ahead and take our break. And uh, we'll be back in five minutes. I'm gonna put five minutes on the timer. Let your losses cool down. I'm gonna put uh, some lovely musics on. Alrighty, folks. Uh, Memphis, thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. Davida, what's up? Hope you're doing well. Good to see you here. Mine added two minutes to the timer. All right, we're having a long break tonight, folks. All righty, go ahead. Take your break, please. Remember, we're here in for the long run. You got to let your, your clicking fingers rest a little bit. Let your eyes look at something out in the distance. Uh, let's go ahead and take our break. I'm going to run ads for three minutes that folks that are coming to the channel don't have to sit through. They can jump right into the action and you should be taking a break anyway. So I'll see you in three minutes. Boom. Where do I get API key? Uh, if you look at the readme file, you need you need the environments file and you're gonna put all of those keys into your environments file. We're gonna talk a little bit about it when we get back from break though. Uh, I'm still a little confused as to when your main routes will run. Uh, so all my main routes are pretty pretty straightforward. They're, if you just look at my main routes file, it's any that's just these. So any of these get picked up by the main routes. Yeah, any of these get picked up by the main route. So some people separate that out into like main and like off, but I put all my like basic ones in here. I think technically like profile and feed should be their own type of thing, maybe in posts, but I think it's a little too, I think it's a little bit harder for folks to read that. So I just kept them in main. All right, folks, please take a break. We got a long one, so you got some time. Get up, stretch, grab some some liquids. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it's, it, the simplified for now is just it's just um, it's kind of just talking about like this, the what we just kind of talked about. Like I, I like I think this is a little lazy, honestly, to have like home, post, and off kind of like all in one like routes. Uh, so that's why I just said simplified for now. But it's not it's not anything more complicated than that. It's just kind of set, separating them out into their own routes file. Uh, no, it, it, they they have to have the for so they said so basically once you're logged in it all goes to the post routes. No, the URL has to have post in it, or else it won't go to the post route. So there's only a few spots where post actually has that and it's um when they're on an actual post is like when that'll show up yeah so if we look at the post routes what anonymous hey thank you for the five gifted subs i appreciate that and anonymously too all right i see you thank you so much that's wild I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Uh, so the post routes are when we try and load an individual post, and then if we're creating, updating, or deleting the post, those are when all the post routes get triggered. So either we're going to like the actual individual post page, or we're doing something on this post page, like deleting, liking, or if we're creating a post here in this form. Those are the four ways that we do posts the post routes. Yeah. Namas, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Cool. All right, I'm going to take a break too. Burb.
the little happy symbol. <laughs> Look who it is. He's like, I'm tired. Let me go back to sleep. <laughs> Classic 80 pound lap dog. Simba's ready to drop some bars. I don't know if you saw that. Simba was like queuing up. I rhyme and I spit. I spit and I rhyme. All right, folks, about 30 seconds left. Finish out your break. I'm gonna let Simba back out. Got a little little Simba action. Just missed a little bit of Simba time, that's all. Come on back, folks. All right, let me put this timer off to the side here. All right. Uh, so we're going to do one more thing. I just want to show Cloudinary, and then we're going to get into our groups tonight uh, on Remo. Uh, finish out your group project. If you're finished, add Cloudinary to it, maybe. Uh, if, you, if you don't uh, have it finished, Get it finished. If you have it finished, add something to it. Make it better, right? Uh, make sure that it's portfolio ready. It looks good. It's on Heroku, all the works. So, uh, one thing I wanted to add here. Let me chill the music. Alrighty. So you will have until Tuesday to submit everything. So this upcoming Tuesday, you have two big things on your list that are due to me. Uh, I want your team project and I want your hit list. So your hit list, yes. Team project and hit list, two really big items that are gonna be due next Tuesday. So we are not having class on Friday and we are not having our review session, our office hours on Sunday because I want you using that four, five out, excuse me, four or five hours of time to throw that into your hit list. So remember, Tuesday, uh, June's coming up quick. If you want my help, you want all that individualized help, you gotta give me the things I'm asking for. Yeah. Uh, first round of your hit list is uh, 30, but eventually it's gonna be 60. Yeah. Uh, first round, let's do 30. I want 30, like, high quality, though. And then full list is going to be 60. So 30, like, really high quality, right? And then um, 60. Yeah. How do I start learning Node? I just started watching your stream. Go three VODs back. We have a back-end crash course and start with that. And then join our Discord, Shady's exclamation point Discord. Ask tons of questions, and uh, we're here to help. Yeah, uh, I want 30 by Tuesday, 60 by by the end. But these 30 better be high quality. No, no, uh, no bullshit. Things, jobs you can actually get that you're qualified for that are entry level roles. Well, you found the right place, Shadies. Let's go, let's get some. We don't get, we don't got. get got, we go get. Hey, that's right, there we go. Hold on, can I, can I turn off the, like, hmm. Let 
So what if I do that? What if I like put this all the way? What if I do that? Huh. All right, hold on. Next person that does the sound alert, uh, I'll, I'll help you with your resume and you're crafting your resume this upcoming week. We'll get a one-on-one -on -one together to, to help with resume and your, your hit list. Bruh. All right, Thor, I got you. Why wow, it still showed up. Oh, cause of the, um, Hmm. Hmm. There and hold on one second. There. All right. Can somebody? Oh. Hmm. So what I was trying to see is I wanted to see if the sound alerts, if I click them off, I don't hear you don't hear the sound. They have to be visible. But some people have it so that uh, you don't see the logo. I'll figure that out eventually. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Imran, you got got. I apologize. <laughs> it's back to normal now. All right. Cool. Uh, there's one other thing I wanted to show you uh, tonight, and that was our Cloudinary. So one of the things that you might have saw if you were pushing your code to Heroku was that all the images that we were creating when we were making posts on Heroku, they were all disappearing after some time. And this has to do with something called, well, Heroku being ephemeral, meaning that Heroku will eventually restart, right? It'll eventually restart a server and when it restarts the server, it's gonna look at the last push and it's gonna use that last push, right? It's gonna use that last push and that last push is how it's gonna rebuild the server. So if there were no photos that were a part of that push and all those photos got uploaded after that push onto Heroku, all those photos disappear. They're just gone. And so what we want to do is not store our photos like on Heroku, uh, but use a service to actually store our photos. And so there's two like big players in this space. The biggest player is Amazon S3. And then another kind of smaller player is called Cloudinary. And they're just places to store your images. That's it. You Well, you can store other media too, but in this case, we're using them to store our images. And the reason why we do that is because one, it's it, they're made to store it. Cloudinary can be super fast. It can give you access to a CDN and all that good stuff. Uh, and I went with Cloudinary and we're gonna use Cloudinary in this class because Amazon S3 only gives you 12 months for free and it's weird to sign up without a credit card. And so Cloudinary actually gives you unlimited free 25 gigabytes a month of, of media and uh, you never have to enter a credit card. So since we're all about doing everything here for free, we'll be using Cloudinary. Cool. Uh, so I just wanna show you real quick how I have this all set up. And if we look at this create post route, uh, you can see that I have this uh, upload single file. And so I'm using Molter to do that. You can see upload single file and Molter is a lovely bit of uh, middleware that handles file uploading, okay? And so I have this lovely Molter JS file that is just the, the docs I got for Molter. And if we finish looking at this route, you can see that this upload single file is part of the create post route. So let's look at that post controller. Let's look at create post. And what you're gonna see is that I am using 
uh, Cloudinary to upload the file that was submitted with that form. And so the neat thing is, before I actually create my post, I submit that file to Cloudinary. And eventually I get a, I get a response back from Cloudinary that the file has been uploaded. And I can grab the URL off of that result and I can grab the ID off of that result. And so what I'm doing is instead of kind of like putting a normal path in here, I'm putting the path that came back from Cloudinary. So what I wind up having in my Mongo database is like a link to the file on Cloudinary. And I'm also storing the Cloudinary ID in here. And the reason why I'm storing the Cloudinary ID is because when I delete my posts, right? When I delete my posts, I also want to delete the image off of Cloudinary because I don't want to have a bunch of these like just photos sitting on my Cloudinary account taking up storage that I'm never going to use. So whenever I create a post, I, I upload it, upload that image to Cloudinary, and then I plug that URL and ID into the document that I'm creating right so that i can then use them anywhere in my application and so when i eventually like make my post you can see that i'm plugging in to my image uh post.image and image is just holding that uh cloudinary url so i thought that was pretty cool uh, it's a pretty simple implementation if you wanted to do this you would need to look at my the way i have my route set up Right, you're gonna need this upload and you're gonna need the Molter middleware. And then in your actual controller, you're going to need the Cloudinary middleware. So I also have this other like Cloudinary JS file. And this I just got once again from their documentation. Right, uh, I didn't write any of this. This is just copy and paste from the docs uh, for Cloudinary. Uh, this was copy and paste for from the docs for Molter. And then the tricky part is just knowing where to plug it all in. And uh, on the routes page, you need to use your Molter uh, middleware because that's what's handling the file upload from that form. And then on your actual controller, you need your Cloudinary middleware so that you can actually like upload stuff to, um, actually upload stuff to Cloudinary. And then the last other little bit here is that if you look at the, um, the readme file, it tells you what to put in your ENV file because you're going to need uh, a cloud name, your API key, and your API secret from Cloudinary. You got to add these values to it or it won't work. So that's kind of uh, just like a very, very quick, quick overview. I'm not going to go into too much detail on it. You can pick it apart and play with it if you want. I just wanted to show that to you because that's something cool that's on here. Also... Uh, let me look at this other one here. One second. Let me make sure who it was. Uh, am I locked in here? Why is it not showing me people? One second. I want to show something here. Uh, shout out Memphis. Uh, thank you, Memphis. I appreciate it. Uh, Memphis has been uh, heeding the call for readme files. And so we got these like, ooh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Look at this readme file here. Uh, this was from Memphis. So shout out Memphis. Thank you for uh, making a pull request with the readme files. Uh, it's been really helpful to have that there for folks. So I appreciate you. And then also uh, shout out to all the folks that have done the YouTube time codes. Oh, there's even more pull requests. Look at all the time codes that I can now go ahead and add to uh, to YouTube. So everyone that submitted the time codes as you're watching the YouTube videos, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Look at all these pull requests. I have to go through and add even more. So I appreciate you all. Uh, where did I get the key? I got it from Cloudinary. So you have to create a Cloudinary account, which is completely free. It doesn't need a credit card and you can do it. Uh, so the first way we did it, we weren't storing the images in Mongo. We were storing the paths in Mongo and the images were being stored on like Heroku's like hard drive basically. But the problem was whenever that server would restart, we lost all of our photos. 
how long did it take me to make the whole binary upload boom app? Not that long. A couple hours? Honestly, like the building of the app was pretty quick. The CSS <laughs> probably took me the most because I was trying to use Bootstrap and I haven't used Bootstrap in a, in a hot minute. And so I was like spending a lot of time like like looking up all the new syntax for version five. Uh, yeah. And so that, that's probably where the most most time went into. Remember the Bob Boba website challenge? Anyone working on that? I, nobody's ever gotten back to me about it. So if you have, send me a mod mail. No, I haven't had time to look at it, Izzy. I'm going, oh, thank you for reminding me. I got to do that. Probably do that tonight while you are all working. Alrighty, folks. Uh, thank you for doing that quick review and having some fun. I want us to get over to Remo. I want you to finish working on your team projects. I want you to get into those teams again on Remo, please. Uh, if you get stuck or have questions, I'll be on Remo. You can come by uh, and ask some questions. I got 98 on the click. That's wild, Izzy. Uh, so let's go ahead and get over to Remo. Get into your teams. If you do not have a team, uh, you can go to the second floor and meet up with folks that don't have a team. Or if you see somebody that has an open spot, uh, see if you can contribute to that team and, and help. All righty, folks. Uh, we're not going to do a raid because we're going to go over to Remo. You can do exclamation point classroom in chat. That'll give you access to our Remo classroom. We're going to be over there working on our team projects. And uh, remember, team projects are due on Tuesday. Uh, our our hit list, hit list top 30 due on Tuesday. If you want my help come June, you want all that individualized help, uh, these things are hard deadlines. And so please make sure you get them in. Uh, if you haven't submitted your Code Wars repos yet, please do that. And uh, keep an eye out for uh, being added to the blog team uh, channels because I'm going to be doing that like right now. All right, folks. Have a good rest of your night. Uh, I'll see you on Remo. Go over to Remo now. There's the links right there here. Even if you haven't joined a team, go over to Remo. Start working on a project. Join another team. Teamwork makes the dream work. It's super important that you get comfortable working in teams. Don't try and learn all this stuff and not work on actual projects. That's a waste. All right, folks. Peace. See you over there.